Welcome to the Coach Mike Magistrelli Show. I'm your host, Logan Howe, and with me today is Coach Magistrelli. Coach, thanks for being here today. Oh, you bet, Logan. So first, let's talk about that Judson game a little bit here. An overtime loss, what was the feeling around the team after that game? Well, obviously a tough tough defeat for us. You know, went on the road and, and, and played Judson, a, a new opponent. Um, you know, it was uh, a tough loss and that we lost the game in overtime, like you mentioned. Uh, had led the football game the entire way up until overtime. And so, you know, I think afterwards, guys, uh, and I know myself was, was caught a little bit off guard, a little speechless. Um, you know, it was certainly a, a difficult loss for us. And looking at the overtime period there, not the most common thing in the world. First overtime game I've seen for the Bees. How do you think the team responded in that extra period? Yeah, over, overtime games are a bit unusual. Um, and and uh, they've done some things within uh, college football to uh, even change overtime. We, were, we only played one overtime period, but uh, they changed the rule. If you go to a second overtime, you must now go for two um, points at that point, um, you know, two-point conversion. Um, if you get to a third overtime or any to overtime after the second one, you actually would have alternated two-point plays. So it's it's really an unusual kind of overtime setup with uh, some of the rule changes. And, and obviously, uh, we only played the one overtime. But uh, you know, I thought it was uh, you know obviously a, a pressure situation to be in. We would have liked to have, have uh, you know answered the bell a little bit better than we did. Obviously, coming up on the short end there in OT. And looking at this Judson team, what challenges do they present to you guys? You know, I thought they did some things, uh, you know, loading the, loading the box defensively, uh, you know, caused us some issues. Uh, you know, we, they, they play at uh, uh, Dundee Crown High School, um, a grass facility where unfortunately for us it had, it had rained all week and, and the, the playing surface was uh, anything but ideal, I guess I would say. Um, it's probably the best way to describe it. And I think that played a, played, a, played a factor into the game to a certain extent. Obviously, both teams had to play on the same surface. So, uh, you know, don't want to make too, too much of it, but I thought those are some things that caused us some issues as well. And then obviously, uh, you know, they could kind of spread us out, uh, you know, on defense. And, and uh, you know, I think in the, in the tough conditions, we had a hard time uh, tackling in space. Yeah, you talked about how tough of a loss it was. With all of that right around the corner, what was your message to this team after that game? Well, we, we felt like up to that point in the season, you know, we had been in, in a lot of close football games. Um, you know, you go back all the way to, you know, week two with Waldorf where we had a lead in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, had, had a, a seven-point game late with uh, Concordia, Michigan, the number five ranked team in the country. And then, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, tough loss there at Lawrence Tech. And then you followed up with the, with the Judson uh, game. So we felt like we had been in some really close football games. We just hadn't, uh, you know, performed well in, in crunch time. So we really challenged uh, not only the players but the staff the, uh, last week in practice and, and uh, to be better in those crunch time situations, to probably put, put uh, pressure on ourselves in practice to perform and, and uh, you answer the call and, and uh, was really proud of the guys, our players, and the way that we responded to that during the week of practice. And that kind of led us up into, uh, you know, the Olivet game. Yeah, and speaking of Olivet here, what was it like to go to Olivet and beat a ranked opponent like that? Well, it was great. Obviously, uh, they're an outstanding football team, really on both sides of the ball. They got a very explosive offense, um, doing a number of different things, both run and pass to uh, you know make it difficult to defend. And then uh, you know defensively, they got the uh, defensive player of the year um, in Jason Freeman, a linebacker, is an outstanding player, and, and uh, you know certainly was a, was a tall test for us. Uh, you know, going up against Olivet, a good a good football team, but then going on the road and, and having to face them uh, you know on their home field was certainly a challenge for us. And Tom Gillen, the kicker, he was honored for his performance in this game. What's it like having a kicker that you know you can trust late in games? Yeah, it, it, it's a huge weapon. Um, you know, obviously he kicked uh, three field goals, three uh, pretty substantial field goals. I think the longest was 47, and the, the shortest might have been that 35 range. So, you know, three pretty good, pretty good field goals. And uh, you know, it's, it's a great feeling knowing that. Uh, you know, if you do get stopped down there short of, of the end zone, you know, you, you can rely on, a, on an outstanding kicker like Tom to be able to put points on the board. And, and obviously, uh, you know, in a low scoring defensive battle, boy, those, those points were extremely uh, critical for us. Yeah, and speaking of special teams, some more here. Jackson Hunsicker had a punt down inside the 10 there. It really kind of helped you guys flip the field. In such a close game, did you feel like the field position battle was kind of the biggest one of the game? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we went into the game knowing, again, they were very high-powered, uh, explosive offense. We felt like we really had to control the ball on offense and, and play really good in the, in the uh, special teams in the kicking game, too. Like you mentioned, be able to flip field, control field position, those type of things. And, you know, I thought the, the, the punt by Jackson Hunsicker, he uh, downed it, I believe, at about the seven-yard line. Um, the very next play, they had a false start penalty, which pushed them back, you know, halfway to the goal line. And then the very next snap after that, um, Drew Ackman was able to get the safety, which is obviously a big, uh, you know, two-point play for us there. I believe that put us up seven at that point and ended up being the, the final margin of victory for us. 
Yeah, and the defense also had a big role in this game. Four sacks and two turnovers. What did they do so well in this game? Yeah, I thought we, again, we tackled extremely well. Um, you know, I thought we uh, did a great job of, of uh, you know, not giving up big plays. I think they had one uh, a pretty good pass play over the top. Outside of that, uh, boy, we kept the ball in front of us, you know, whether it be in the, uh, you know, within the passing game or the running game, kind of limiting, uh, you know, their big play explosive ability. The, the, the quarterback got out a couple times, kind of, uh, you know, whether design run or scramble run. But outside of that, man, I thought we played uh, outstanding defense throughout. Yeah, and Roy, Ray Boye had 106 yards rushing in this game. What did he do fantastically in this game? Yeah, Ray's a, a really, really good football player, um, a, a extreme competitor. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's a guy that's uh, battled some injuries this year for us, and it was nice to get him back in the, you know, in the fold a little bit. Uh, you know, we lost to Knowledge uh, Hall the second uh, series of the game with an injury, and so um, Ray really kind of carried the bulk of the load from that point forward. And, and uh, again, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's a smaller back. He gets lost in the, in the uh, line of scrimmage sometimes, I think. And, uh, uh, but he's, he's very physical for his size. I thought he ran the ball extremely, extremely hard, extremely well. Um, obviously, I thought the guys up front did a good job of, uh, you know, opening some holes for him, uh, you know, as well as our, our super backs and tight end position as well. And then, uh, you know, we're able to find Ray for a big pass play out of the backfield as well. So Ray did it on, you know, really both ends running and receiving. Yeah, and quarterback Tom Casey scored the only touchdown of the day for the Bees. Do you think this was a big confidence boost for him and just his young career here? Well, I, I certainly think so. You know, I thought Tom did a great job, made good decisions throughout the day, um, really did a great job. Uh, Kind of, you know, some some people refer to it as managing the game. You know, uh, we we kind of ended the the game with a our, what we call our four minute offense, where we're up and we got to pick up a couple first downs and ice the game. And I thought he did a great job of uh, you know managing the situation throughout. And again, we uh, you know kind of went in with the mindset that hey, we we're gonna have to slow things down a little bit and, and play time possession, you know, possession football and, and control the clock and you know uh, again get the kicking game involved, all those things. And I thought uh, we did a great job of executing that plan. And do you think this victory is going to be kind of that big confidence boost the rest of the way for you guys? Well, I, I think so. I think it was a big step for us. You know, again, we, we uh, you know, struggled early in the year in some of these close football games. Uh, you know, they don't get much more uh, um, adversity than going on the road and, and facing a really good football team in Olivet, uh, having the game come down to, again, the final couple possessions of the game and be able to answer the bell and, and uh, play really well like that. So I think there's a lot of great things we can pull from that as we move forward throughout the rest of the season. Coach, thank you. We'll hear from you again soon. Up next, we'll hear from DJ Mumwa. Don't go anywhere. I knew that I wanted to go to a smaller school that was still located in the Midwest and I remember when I toured here I felt compared to other schools I felt like I was touring the place that I could picture myself next year. I could see myself studying in this library and taking these science courses. Um, something that really stood out to me when I toured St. Ambrose was that a faculty member that I talked to earlier in the day when I passed them hour later, hours later they greeted me with my first name. And I knew that this really was, um, I felt so welcomed here. Welcome back to the Coach Mike Magistrelli Show. With me now is DJ Muma. DJ, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. So first question I have for you here, how did you start playing football? Uh, I started in kindergarten. Uh, my dad introduced the sport to me. Uh, sport meant a lot to him, so passing that on to me was kind of something that he took a lot of pride in. Uh, coached me all the way through JFL to eighth grade. Um, hasn't missed a game, I don't think, ever in my life. And now looking at your sports career, was football the only sport you played growing up, or was there several others? Uh, I played baseball and did track a little bit in junior high, but football's always been my primary focus and something that we've always taken great pride in and focus and uh, really uh, concentrated on. 
And is there a moment in your football career that sticks out to you as possibly your favorite? Uh, my senior year of high school, uh, we won our conference outright. It had been a couple years. We had a couple down years after our uh, state championship run my freshman year. So coming out my senior year and being the class that uh, brought the conference championship home outright, um, that was probably the that night that we uh, beat Athens. That was probably the best moment that uh, I can remember. Yeah, and after high school, it's always a tough decision. Where are you going to go to college at? What drew you to St. Ambrose? Uh, Coach Magistrelli and their staff really made me feel welcome here. Um, the small class sizes and really the interaction uh, with the coaches, um, they really made you feel like they cared about you and uh, like this was a place that uh, you could feel like home. And speaking of that coaching staff, how's your time been under Coach Magistrelli and his staff? Um, it's been phenomenal, uh, not only uh, on the field with uh, I made a transition uh, last year from defensive end to super back. Talked to Coach Magistrelli and Coach uh, Phillip. Uh, we uh, talked and decided that super back would probably be a good fit for me. Um, so on the field, it's been phenomenal. And then off the field, uh, whether it be helping with uh, job related things in the future, um, they've taken a really big interest in uh, helping me uh, succeed both as a player and a person. In last season, you guys had an interesting year playing in the spring, but now back in the fall, what's it like for you to be playing fall football again? Uh, it's a quick turnaround, uh, three months off in the summer, um, but it's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, more football is always better, so uh, getting in, uh, playing in the spring, and then able to have a quick turnaround and come back in the fall has been uh, huge. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, at first, when COVID happened and we realized we were going to be playing in the spring, uh, and then obviously have a quick turnaround in the fall at first, a little scary, but uh, no, it's been phenomenal. Yeah, now looking at your mass, last matchup against Olivet, how do you think the team played? Uh, I think the one thing uh, that I describe our team as is uh, guys who just don't know how to quit. Um, Coach Magistrelli said earlier that uh, we've been in a lot of close games. Um, we talked all week. Coach uh, Gadberry talked, uh, don't ring the bell, don't ring the bell. And that was kind of something we took personal. So the fact that we didn't quit and that we didn't care if we were going to play a top-ranked opponent, we were going to go out and we were going to play our best. and. Uh, just basically, uh, that was a huge thing for us. Yeah, and beating a top-ranked opponent has to be an awesome feeling. What was the feeling in the locker room after that game? Uh, it was electric. Uh, the guys were going crazy. Um, after the game, uh, we were all pretty emotional, uh, whether it be uh, players in between one another with interactions with coaches. It was, it was an awesome experience. Uh, glad, Really glad that it uh, went down the way that it did. And what can we expect from this Bees team moving forward the rest of the season? Uh, I think you're going to see a really, uh, really f uh, focused team, uh, guys who are just going to basically do everything we can to win out and uh, keep working towards the goals that uh, we've set for ourselves. Yeah, and last question I have here for you, what are some of those goals that you set for yourself this season? Uh, being the best teammate I can is obviously uh, right there. Um, helping guys uh, basically doing my uh, 111th part. And then also uh, the big goal obviously is always uh, to win conference. Um, I know that's a way down the stretch, but uh, that's something that's always in the back of our minds and every step of the way and every single thing we do every day at practice in the weight room or in the classroom is a step towards working towards that. DJ, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Up next, we'll hear from Coach Magistelli once again to preview next week's game. Don't go anywhere. who received scholarship and I knew that that was something that other people had done for me so it's it's important to to recognize that and then to also do the same to be able to give that to another student and help other students have that opportunity is something that um, I just recognize is important because it made such a difference to me we're more than a radio station we're your neighbors, investing time in our community. We're mentors, guiding the next generation of broadcasters. We're supporters of veterans, partners with social service agencies, and investigators of history. We're dedicated sports fans. We're committed to the stories that make the Quad Cities unique. We are KALA Radio, 88.5 FM, 106.1 FM. Turn it on, turn it up. Welcome back to the Coach Mike Magistrelli Show. With me again is Coach Magistrelli. 
And coach, looking in this next matchup against St. Francis, Illinois, what can we expect from this team? Well, they're they're uh, very powerful football team. Uh, you know, offensively, they've got a quarterback that really uh, uh, can both throw it but run around. He's extremely athletic. They do a lot of design quarterback runs for him. So, uh, you know, keeping him corralled will be a a big challenge for us defensively. And uh, uh, you know, they're very stingy on defense. Uh, they they kind of base out of a three three stack look, um, yeah, but they uh, they have a lot of guys that that fly around the football very very well. Yeah, and the Saints have won three straight matchups coming into this one. Are they just getting hot after a rough start they had, losing two straight? Well, they faced two pretty good football teams out of the gates. Uh, I believe it was Santa Heights and, and Marion, if I'm not mistaken. And, and obviously, those are two really good football teams. And, uh, you know, they got off to, like you mentioned, the 0-2 start. But they've uh, won the, the last three in a row, three conference games. So they're actually sitting atop the conference right now at 3-0. and And obviously, uh, have a lot of momentum right now, a lot of confidence. And, and I'm sure it'll be a, a, a very good and, and fired up uh, football team that we'll be facing Saturday. And looking at this Saints team, is there any players on that team that Bees fans should have on their radar for this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mentioned uh, you know the quarterback. He, he's uh, uh, his brother plays on the defensive side. Tumulty is the last name, and and uh, he's an outstanding safety as well. So between the quarterback and the safety, there's there's two really good football players that'll be on the on the field. Basically, one uh, you know at, at all times. Um, they have an outstanding receiver as well, a, a big play threat that uh, you know they do a great job of getting him in kind of one-on-one -on -one matchups and getting him the football as well. So you know certainly uh, uh, be tested that way. Now looking at the Bees' offense this week, what can we expect from this unit? Yeah, it'll, it'll be uh, again going against the three-three stack look. They're going to try and load the line of scrimmage and uh, you know make it difficult on us to run the football. Obviously, that's something we take a lot of pride in being able to run the football and, and kind of everything for us offensively kind of starts with that and and kind of feeds off that. So obviously, finding a way to get a hat on a hat up front, uh, they do a lot of different uh, you know things within that three-three stack, kind of moving pieces and things like that. So. Uh, making sure that we understand schemes and, and what we're trying to accomplish. Now looking defensively for this Bees team, what are some keys this weekend? Yeah, like I mentioned, the, the, the quarterback's a, you know explosive player. A lot of uh, his big plays come off extended plays, whether against something designed with a, with a quarterback run or, again, a pass play where he ends up uh, scrambling. He leads them in, in uh, both rushing yards but also rushing attempts. So he's a young man they like to, like to feature, and obviously we'll have to keep him again, corralled between the tackles and, and do a great job, again, tackling in space because that's one of the things they, uh, they, they really do a great job of offensively is uh, you know, forcing you into situations uh, where you're going to have to tackle and tackle well. Coach, thank you for being here today. That concludes the Coach Mike Magistrelli's show. Thank you for listening and good night.